16, and you'll find that on page 109 in the New Testament of your Bibles. Now, on that same day, the day of resurrection, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Jesus said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened. And they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions together. They they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite the children to come up with me, please. I need all available. Come on. Very good. Yay! We, we're going to stand up here. Sorry. <laughs> we're going to do names today. Can you say your name, please? Ava. Ava. RJ. RJ. Eli. You heard that one. Maya. Maya. Raquel. Raquel. Chloe. Chloe. Great. Wonderful. I'm glad you are all here this morning. Come on over here. I have a question for you. Do you think that you would recognize Jesus if you saw him? Yes, no, yes, no. Well, I'm asking because, you know, his disciples, the ones that he hung out with all the time, the ones he basically sat at lunch table with and played on the playground with, all his friends did not recognize him when they saw him after the resurrection. Now, can you imagine spending all that time with somebody and not recognizing them? That seems weird, huh? 
But eventually, eventually, they did recognize him. Come with me. I'll show you. Come on up here. We're going to stand around here. What do we do up here every week? Do you know? We pray. And this is where we put our communion stuff. And Pastor Brian and I uh, say the words of institution here, and we serve communion from this altar table, right? And we break the bread, and we share it. Jesus' disciples did not recognize his face, but they recognized his actions, right? They recognized him when he started breaking that bread, Raquel, and sharing it out. It reminded them of the Passover dinner when he had done that before he was crucified, okay? So they didn't recognize his face, but they recognized his actions. We're going to try this again. Come with me. It's a field trip today. Come on. I have a question. Yes, Brickell. You have a question about Jesus. Um, okay. So why did they didn't recognize him? Well, they didn't recognize him because we don't fully understand that, but somehow in the resurrection you look different. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's stuff we'll know later, I guess. Come on, this way. Okay. I want you to stand right over here and look out there now. Now do you recognize Jesus? Mm. <laughs> you don't see him. Okay, so you know how this is Trinity Lutheran Church, right? We, hey, come on, come on, come on, there's room for you. Yay! Um, so we are Christians, but we follow this guy named Martin Luther. I'll be right with you, okay, Brick? Oh, Esme, yep. Not Martin Luther King, nope, just Martin Luther. So Martin Luther said that we who believe in Jesus have a little bit of Jesus right within us. So if we're all having a piece of Jesus in us, do you see Jesus now? No. No? I do. I see Jesus in all these people up here. Uh, as the church, sometimes when you don't see Jesus, you have to be Jesus. Okay? That's how it works. Jesus wants us to share who he is and how he loves people. Okay? Well, so He tried to, he, well, he saved us. He did save us, and he wants everybody to know how much he loves people. And because he doesn't make too many public appearances anymore, that's up to us to tell. Here, come here. The church has a way we do this. Come with me. So we take this pretty seriously as a church. It even affects the way that the building is built. We want everybody who comes here to know that they are welcome and loved and wanted all the time. When Jesus was here, we're going to stand back here a second. When Jesus was alive, he taught us that it didn't matter if you were a boy or a girl, young or old, what color your hair or skin was, if you wore glasses or not glasses, didn't matter. He loved everybody, rich and poor, didn't matter, didn't matter. So our building is built with this room in front that we think of as like a welcome center. It has a funny church name called a narthex. Who says that? Nobody. Just pastors. And in this room is where we welcome everybody. There are people who stand at the door and say, welcome, we're glad you're here. Here's a bulletin. Here's how we do things here. Because we want everybody to know that they are always welcome here. That's one, one little way that we as a church try to show, uh, show Jesus to other people. Come here. I'll show you something else. Another way that we do it, do you remember in the spring when we had Super Bowl Sunday? I guess that was the winter. It's spring now. Super Bowl Sunday, and the carts were up there, and we filled up the carts with all that food. Yeah? That's another way that we as the church try to show people that Jesus is real and Jesus loves them because Jesus was always 
feeding people, welcoming people. He didn't want anybody to be hungry or anything like that. So that's another way that we show as the church, as this group of people, the church. But you know, there are ways that we can show Jesus just as individuals. What do you think some ways that we could show people about Jesus might be? Hmm. Congregation, how might you show Jesus to other people? How might you act? Hmm? Act with kindness. Kindness, yes. That's nice. What do you think, Raquel? Um, um, tell jokes and stories in the car. Telling jokes and stories in the car. Yes. <laughs> Why not have friendliness on a car ride, right? Everybody loves that. Help fold. Help fold. Oh, be helpful. And you can also help fold the laundry, right, Kat? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Send him over to my house when he's done. <laughs> yes, you can be helpful, right? And help clean up. Help clean up. Generous. What? Generous. Oh, RJ, that's a beautiful one. Be generous. Maybe with your patience, with your time. Sometimes that means forgiving people. Be kind. That's right. Anything else from the congregation? What do you think is a Jesus way to be? Yes. Give. Give. Yeah. What would you give the world if you could? Money. Money. Yeah. Thankful. Thankfulness. Yeah. Food. There are a, what? Food. Food. Yep. We do it. Yep. There are a lot of ways to show Jesus just by the way you act. You don't always have to say, like at the lunch table, well, Jesus loves you. I mean, you could, but you don't always have to. Because I'll tell you a secret. Even for adults, that's a little awkward, right? Adults, right? Yeah? We're, that's not our best skill. <laughs> but we can a lot more easily and readily show people that Je show how Jesus loves them. What's up, Raquel? Oh, to say her name in the microphone? Yeah. Oh, justice is also a Jesus thing. Would you like to say your name into the microphone? No. Okay. That says me, everybody. Her name says me. <laughs> but thank you, Burkell, for making sure we're even Stephen. Now, there's a flip side to showing Jesus, okay? Showing how Jesus loves people. And what I mean is, Sometimes we stand out a little bit by, by being friendly, yes, but also by what we don't do, okay? As Christians, as people, but as Christians especially, we are called to be nice. And so that means that we don't laugh at people, right? We don't make fun of people. And in fact, we sometimes have to say, I don't think that's funny, and walk away. And adults, again, is that hard, adults? Yes, yes. Yeah. it is. Yeah. It is. If somebody tells a funny joke, you can laugh. Yes, if it's a funny joke, but not if it's making fun of Chloe or something. That's not a funny joke, is it? No, that would hurt feelings. So our being a Christian, following Jesus and showing Jesus, sometimes it means a certain way we act, and sometimes it means a certain way we don't act. We don't pick on people. We don't gang up on people. We don't bully. Yeah, you got it, brother. Don't bully. And in fact, we might say, I'm going to go hang out with that kid that you guys are being crummy to because it's not okay with me. And sometimes we stand out that way. And we know that. Again, adults, we know that. It's weird to stand out sometimes, but we do it even when it's hard. Okay, one last trip. Come on up here. We're coming back to the font. Okay? So, sometimes the best way to recognize Jesus is by the way we act, not necessarily by the way we look. And that's how his disciples recognized him. So, this week, I'm going to give you some homework, okay? You love homework, don't you, Eli? No. <laughs> this one's easier, I promise. How many of you 
say to your mom, dad, grandparents, somebody like that during the week, do you ever say, I love you? Yes, yeah. always. Yeah, always, always. Tiffany, your girls are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you should tell mom that. She likes that. <laughs> this week, when you say, I love you, I want you to add on something. I want you to say, I love you, and so does Jesus. Okay? Because mm, number one, it's true. And number two, it is easier for us to become good at showing and telling about Jesus if we're practicing it. When we're in the middle of the congregation with a bunch of people who believe in Jesus, that's pretty easy. It's a good time for us to practice our faith and talking about Jesus. It's also good to practice it at home, okay? It's good to do that. It it becomes a good habit. So this week we're going to try that, okay? Yes, Brickell. What do you put in there? Usually we put water in there, but for some reason it's such a fancy bowl, we can't have water in there all the time because it's, then we'd have to clean it a whole lot. I think we should get a plastic bowl so we can have water in there all the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to send you back to your seats, but I want to say this. I love you, and so does Jesus. Okay? Okay, head on back, kiddos. Thank you so much for coming up and helping me. So, and adults, I trust that you got all that, right? Yes, I think you did. So we are going to go ahead and sing our hymn of the day, hymn number 808.